to think of how to teach people to understand drag, drop, and JavaScript in the simplest way. I have been thinking very much. And then, I came up with an idea to create a copy of the Sticky Notes application that is available on all Windows computers. With full functionality to create notes, write notes, change its color, and most importantly, every note can be easily moved. I believe that after this video, everyone will easily understand how the drag drop function in JavaScript works. If this is your first time visiting my channel, this is a channel that continuously updates useful knowledge and builds interesting web design, so please subscribe to the channel to keep it updated. Thank you everyone, and now let's get started. First in HTML, I created main. This will be where all application content is located. Inside it has two main components. Form is a place for users to choose colors and create new notes. Input color will have the ID color. The button will have the ID create button. List is where the list of notes that have been created is displayed. Each note will be a class note. I will create a sample note here so we can easily design. Each note will include two components. The span close tag is used so that when the user clicks on it, it will allow this note to be deleted. The text area input will allow users to enter content into the note. In HTML, it's just like that. Now I will go through CSS so we can continue designing before getting to JavaScript. Body will have a dark background color. Margin zero. Font family poppins. With main. I make its width and height equal to the device's screen. Add overflow hidden so that if any note falls out of this range, it will be hidden. With background. I use repeat linear gradient from left to right. Combine transparent and white to create a vertical line effect. Similarly, I create a horizontal line from top to bottom. Add position relative so that notes inside can move position based on it. Now the form, where notes are created. It will have a white background, with max content, padding 5 pixels, margin 10 pixels, border radius 24 pixels, display flex to arrange inputs. The distance between it is 10 pixels. Both the input color and button will have a width of 30 pixels, height 30 pixels, padding 0, remove borders, for transparent background color, large size fonts. Cursor pointer to create a hand effect when the user clicks. For input color only, point to WebKit color swatch wrapper to remove the padding between the border and the color picker inside. Then point to WebKit color swatch to round the four corners of the color selection inside into a circle. In the list, we also have an input called text area. I will remove all its default values with all unset, then add white color. For each note, there will be a dark gray background with max content. It has a very large top border of about 30 pixels in yellow. Of course, through JavaScript, this border color will be changed according to the user's needs. Border radius 10 pixels. Create a shadow behind with box shadow. Padding 10 pixels. Please pay attention here. Each note has a position absolute property that helps it move to any position it wants easily. For example, I want it to be 60 pixels away from the top. 50 pixels from left. The span tag is the close tag in each note. I also use absolute to move it above the border. Edit size, font family, and add cursor pointer. So that's all our CSS. Now let's start the important part of this video in JavaScript. The first thing to do in JavaScript is to recall the HTML elements that we need JavaScript to manipulate. First will be input color. Next is create button. And finally, the element list, where notes are stored. The next job is to create a new note. So when the user clicks on the button, I will proceed to run a function. In this function, I create a new div element. This div will have class note. And of course, the content inside this element is the span and text area tags that we modeled in HTML. Once created, I proceed to add this new element to the list with a pen child. So it worked. In addition, for the note to have the same color as the color the user chooses. Then in the newly created element, 
I point to CSS to change its border color with the value of input color. It's as simple as that. We can easily create new notes with the color of our choice. Next thing, that is, when the user clicks on the close tag, this note will have to be deleted. Then I will catch the event when the user clicks anywhere on the screen. With event being all data about this event. With the event target being the element that the user just clicked on. You can see that when I click on the button to create a note, it displays the button element. And when I click on close tag, it shows a span tag with class close. Then we have to check. If the object that the user clicks on is a close class, then we will continue processing. Follow rules. We just need to add the remove function right after the element we want to delete and it will be deleted. But if we do so, then only the close class is removed. The object I want to delete is the note class containing this close class. So add the parent node so it can get the class node element, then delete it. So we have completed the step of creating and deleting notes. Now will be the most important step. Drag and drop. According to the principle of moving position. On the screen, there will always be two coordinate axes, ox and oi. The position of an element is determined based on the magnitude of x and y. So now I will create two variables. Cursor is used to store the coordinates of the mouse pointer when it has just been clicked on a note, and of course the coordinates are x and y. The note variable is used to store information about the note being dragged and dropped. The DOM variable is used to determine which element is being controlled. And X and Y are its initial coordinates before the user drags and drops. In the drag and drop control, it consists of three events. The first event is when the user puts down the mouse. This is the behavior of the user clicking but not releasing the mouse immediately. The first thing we need to do is check to see if the location where the user just placed the mouse is a note. If not, then we don't need to deal with it. And if the click position is a note, I proceed to declare the initial coordinate value for the mouse pointer. With client X is the magnitude of the X axis. And client T is the magnitude of the Y axis of the mouse pointer. For example, when I click here, the coordinate position that the click cursor will be as follows. X is 228 pixels. And Y is 73 pixels. I continue to fill in the information of the currently clicked note into the note variable. Event target is the note being clicked by the user with elements in HTML. To get its X and Y coordinates, we must use the get bounding client track function in JavaScript, where left is the X coordinate and top is the Y coordinate of that note. Remember that these are just the initial coordinates. For example, now I click on this record. Then the coordinates of this record will be X 50 pixels, Y 60 pixels. The next important event is that the user drags the mouse. We only process further when the user is dragging a note. So how do we know that? Remember that in the previous event, we set the note DOM equal to the note element being clicked, right? So here we just check if the current note DOM is null, meaning no note has been clicked on. So I finish processing and don't do anything else. On the contrary, if I have selected a note to drag, I will continue to process it. I declare a variable current cursor used to store the current coordinates of the mouse cursor. Now we have the current position of the cursor in the current cursor variable and the initial position when the user clicks on the cursor variable in the mouse down, right event? So if we subtract the original position from the current position, I will get the distance that the mouse has moved and I will store it in the distance variable. Now, everything is very simple. If you want the current note to move with the mouse, we just need to add the distance that the mouse has moved to the original coordinate position of that record. For example, I want to move the x-axis of the record. Then I just need to take the initial position of node x plus the distance that the mouse pointer has moved along the x-axis. Don't forget to add pixel units at the end so the CSS can understand. Likewise, I will also move the y-axis of the record by the distance the mouse pointer has moved along the y-axis. And this is the result. But didn't I say from the beginning that we have three important events? That's right, we have one more important event left. If the mouse down event helps us determine the initial position in note element. The mouse move event helps us move the note position according to the mouse pointer position. The mouse up event is used to describe the behavior of the user releasing the mouse and not continuing to drag. 
So in this event, our task is to somehow signal the mouse move event that the element being dragged will no longer need to be dragged. So let's look at the mouse move event again. Is it true that for this event to work, it must check that the note DOM is not null? So it's simple. Here we just need to change the note DOM value to null. And that's it. And this is our result. To make the effect more beautiful and standard UI design, when the user drags the mouse, I transform the cursor into a hand. And when I stop, I return the effect, I set it to auto to lose my hand. Notice that. We only do these things when the value of note DOM is not null. So we have created drag and drop functions in JavaScript based on catching mouse down, mouse move, and mouse up events. If you have any questions you don't understand, please leave a comment and I'll help you answer them. And if you find this video interesting and useful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my support channel. Thank you very much, everyone. Lundev's channel specializes in building series related to programming and web design, including HTML, CSS, JavaScript, as well as React.js frameworks, Bootstrap, Tailwinds, and of course, all the code is always free. See you everyone in the next video.